Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our symposium this morning on science and engineering in the Islamic heritage. I hope you are all well rested after yesterday's feast um, in the House of Lords. It was a great success, and we thoroughly enjoyed having everyone there, and I personally enjoyed being there. Now, I have the great honor of opening today's proceedings on, the, on behalf of our trustees of the Yamani Cultural and Charitable Trust, and on behalf of the Board of Directors of the Al Furqan Islamic Heritage Foundation and its chairman, Sheikh Ahmed Zaki Yamani. Uh, I would like to start by thanking our co organizers, the FSTC, for the help and the great support we had throughout the years and coming to this event today they provided a lot of as i said support and we continue to do so in the future i know everyone knows that the of the close relationship we have with the uh, fstc and therefore i will allow myself to speak on their behalf as well this morning we gather to teach, to learn, to share papers, to uh, look at anecdotes and stories, debate an important heritage that benefited the human civilization. Uh, now whether we are a part of that heritage or not, there is no denying the direct impact of the Islamic heritage on our daily lives. Um, we also gather to challenge a false, I would call a false common narrative that chooses to divide the world into two parts, the advanced and the underdeveloped, the superior and the inferior, the West and the rest. This mainstream historical narrative does not necessarily recognize that once upon a time, the area between the West of India and the north of Africa once served as the world's nervous system, connecting people, trade, knowledge, and ideas. And although we do refer to it as the Islamic heritage, it is really a human heritage, created by a mix of people, diverse in ethnicity and ideologies, Muslims, Christians, Jews, Turks, Europeans, Kurds, Indians, and Persians, under the patronage of the Muslim empire, had equal merits, serving, creating, and producing what is now known as the scientific method, and advancing humanity in the process. Individuals, like in the field of philosophy, Ibn Rushd, Ibn Sina, Al-Kindi, Al-Farabi, the Jewish philosopher, Musa bin Maymun, all contributed to the development, for example, of modern European philosophy. In mathematics, al-Khawarizmi played a significant role in the development of algebra, algorithms, Arabic, Indian, numerals, all contributing to today's mathematical uh, uh, algorithms powering our mobile phones and computers. In engineering, the Banu Musa brothers, for example, of Persian descent, arguably created the first programmable machine when they created and described the automatic flute player. In medicine, Zahrawi was a 10th century Spanish physician. He, saw, he is sometimes referred to as the father of surgery. And Ibn al-Haytham, a significant figure in the history of scientific method and has been described as the world's first true scientists. These are but a few examples of the diverse pool of scientists and scholars whom had a measurable effect on our lives today. It is the mission of this foundation and others like the FSTC to promote the universality of this heritage. And it is a vital mission today more than yesterday due to the wave of uh, divisive rhetoric and views that aims to separate people today, 
by erasing the historical, cohesive, and collaborative scientific achievements of generations past. Uh, throughout the years, the Al Furqan Foundation uh, had continuously promoted the influence of the Islamic heritage on subjects of science. To name but a few, we had several publications, four in mathematics, two in exact scientists, two in medicine. We had an important pu publication in geography when the foundation co-published Professor David Kinn's book, The World Maps for Finding the Directions and Distances to Mecca in 1999. We are happy to have Professor King with us today. We, had an, we have also published an important book in engineering, The Corpus of Its Fizari, The Sciences of Weights and Mechanical Devices, edited by Dr. Muhammad Abatoy and Dr. Salim Al-Hassani. Extremely proud to have Dr. Hassani with us, a book we are proud to have, uh, to have inaugurated last night in the House of Lords. And like today's public event, the Foundation had one conference in 1999, Earth Sciences and Islamic Manuscripts. We had several public lectures in exact scientists, sciences and <coughs> mathematics. And a lecture given not so long ago by Professor George Saliba on the scientific importance of commentaries with special uh, focus on the field of astronomy. We are honored to have Professor Saliva with us today. And 16 years ago, the foundation hosted a symposium like this one, celebrating the millennial anniversary of Thabit ibn Qurra, one of the greatest scholars who established a school that played an important role in the advancement of the human civilization. Some of you might remember it because you were there. Professor Ikmaluddin Hassan Oglo chaired an important panel on day one. Professor Salim Al Hassani gave a lecture titled Bringing Life to the Machines of Al Jazari and Taqiyuddin through Engineering Analysis and Three Dimensional Animations. Professor Charles Burnett lectured on the astrological and magical works of Thabit. Ibn Qurra. It is really great to see old friends contributing to today's symposium. We have 17 lecturers and participants. I thank them all for joining us. And finally, a figure that was brought to my attention I would like to share with you. Uh, in the Al Furqan digital library portal, where you will find uh, the and explore and search through the world survey of Islamic manuscripts. As you know, this is a survey of 106 countries that is continuously updated. 72% of the world surveyed libraries contain libraries with manuscripts or manuscript collections that fall within a scientific subject. That's more than 500 library collections that contain manuscripts of 17 scientific subjects. I mention this uh, to end with a simple point. Of the surviving Islamic manuscripts in libraries around the world, the majority of these libraries contain scientific manuscripts. And most are in great need of study to uncover layers of historical no knowledge that we have yet to attain. We strive here through today's symposium and other future efforts to encourage others to study and understand the scientific achievements of many before us. Opening up new questions and new areas of thoughts in order to challenge and scrutinize dogmas or false narratives. Above all, we hope to inspire those to look at history in a different, more unifying way. Again, welcome to today's symposium. Uh, I hope you will all enjoy it, and I thank you very much for coming.